Hey guys, my name is Brandon, and I'm going to show you how to create a custom typographic logo using Adobe Illustrator. Now, you might wonder, why not just use a font? Well, many popular logos are made out of their own font, and it's usually drawn by hand in order to stand out more and to be more unique. A perfect example of that would be a brand like Coca-Cola, where you could just look at a little part of the logo and automatically know that it's Coca-Cola. So here, I'm drawing out my logo. I'm using a Tombow dual tip brush pen and uh, I'm drawing in a calligraphic style. It takes a lot of practice but it's useful if you wish to create a custom logo. Once you're done drawing out the basics of your logo, you can then refine it with either a pencil or you could then freestyle it when you're on Illustrator to give it smoother lines. Alright, so once you're done taking a picture or scanning your custom logo type that you've drawn out, go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator, then go and place your your picture, go and look for it first, uh, there we go, there's mine, and then drag it out and open it on your artboard, like so. And now before we start I'll show you how I set up my artboard, I start off by opening my rulers, so you press Control an R, or if you're on a Mac it would be Command R, and that would open up your rulers. And then I just set up some lines here that I'm going to place on another layer. And we're just going to call this layer Guides. And I'm going to put another one vertically that I'm going to align to my artboard like so, this one, like so. That way I know where the center is. We're going to lock that layer and we're going to double click on the thumbnail of the first layer which would be my image and click on template. It's going to lock the layer and it's going to dim it by 50%. Once that's done, we'll open up another layer and start creating your logo type. So using the pen tool, you're gonna zoom in because you get more mobility that way. And the way I do it is in order to get the most perfect lines as possible, I do 90 degree anchor points. That means vertical and horizontal anchor points. What I mean by that is when you click to create a, an anchor point, I'm not just going to go ahead and do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift. That way my anchor points are always at 90 degrees. See that? And that's the best way to get the cleanest, um, the cleanest shapes and curves. It prevents a lot of Edge, sharp edges and so this is how we're going to start I'm gonna start right here make a vertical anchor point actually I'll start right here vertical anchor point and then come down here make another vertical You could grab your handles and do some adjustments. If you think it's not long enough, like so. I know it's not perfect, but it's better than the way that I originally drew it. And so you're gonna come through a bunch of fixes like that where you're gonna notice that your logo type that you hand drew wasn't as perfect as you thought. Obviously mine's not really perfect, I just 
did it quick so another vertical and to get your handles all you have to do is press on hold the alt key and then you can drag them while holding the shift so you stay vertical there you go and uh, since this anchor point well these anchor points are going to overlap on the U it doesn't really matter what you do but just for consistency I'll create another vertical go down here another vertical make some adjustments holding the alt key there we go once more like so then we'll proceed over here another vertical just like that and we're starting to get the shape of our C now it's not perfect there will be some adjustments that will have to be made um, now we could continue and do that little loop part I'm gonna come over here make another vertical like so bring it down a little come over here I'll do a horizontal and then using the alt key again and the shift key I'll bring this anchor point up go over here make another horizontal and come over here and make a horizontal there we go and it gave me a nice little swoosh effect I'm gonna move this anchor point a bit so it flows better on the line and once we're here we could connect it make sure you see that little circle and you connect your anchor points together so you know the shape is closed more adjustments and there you go this is our C now if you take it and put the fill in you're going to see well you'll notice that it's not perfect yet so you can see the thickness is not completely consistent but that's alright because down strokes are usually thicker than up strokes by knowing that you can make some adjustments around here you bring this down a bit this one too right there like so over here too maybe grab the anchor point move it up over there so it flows better bring this handle higher or maybe not you can leave it like that it's not it's not that bad and there we have it this is our first letter the letter C we'll proceed with the U For consistency, we're just going to duplicate the shape and then create our U. Close it up, overlap it on the C. Here you go, here you go. Now, what I just noticed is that what I could have done instead of redrawing a completely new T, I could have just used a part of the U. Let me just copy it by dragging it while pressing Alt. 
and since it already has the basic same shape, all I would need to do is grab these two anchor points using the direct selection tool or this one or the letter A and then drag it upwards and that would keep the consistent consistency going I could just delete that and replace it right there it would keep the same flow although I, there are some adjustments that need to be done like so there you go so in order to keep consistency in your typography remember that since you're breaking down how each letter should be created you can take some parts of the letters and rearrange them around just so you could get a more consistent look and feel to your logo type now as you can see it's not perfectly aligned that's why we have this guide here so we could set it up right under the U because that's where I want the, the letters to sit on lock it again grab our T drag it downwards while holding shift there we go all right so the way that I made my O it's kind of different from the way I drew it. Um, it's just an easier way to do it. I just make the outlines and then close it up. And then using the pathfinders, I'm going to subtract this piece from the bigger piece so that now it's just one shape. Alright, so here, since the M is composed of the same shapes, I'm going to take this shape and duplicate it so I don't have to draw it again. And it creates more consistency that way. Now I'll grab this one and drag it once more. So once you have your logo type done, you can go ahead and look for any little mistakes that you can fix. Like uh, right now I could spot the T, this should be thinner. So I added the words logo and creation here balance things to balance things out better and uh, not to add some effects what I'm gonna do first to not lose this I'm gonna duplicate it and leave it somewhere else and then what we're gonna be doing is working on this one so I'm going to take everything and using the pathfinder I'll merge all of the pieces together so it becomes one solid piece and then I'll duplicate it by copying and then
pasting it right on top placing it right on top of the type and then placing it downwards in your layers by pressing control shift and open bracket open square bracket and it should bring it to the bottom where you could then put a stroke on it put a stroke of 20 I'll round it out and then this piece I could put it white so it gives it a nice little effect here what I could also do is take it and move it gives it a nice little three-dimensional effect and uh, as you can see from here if I take this all my anchor points are perfectly horizontal and vertical and uh, by using that you minimize the amount of anchor points you need it makes all the edges smoother much cleaner so yeah there you go custom logo creation